Hello, brethren. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. I pray here that wherever you may be, you may enjoy the peace that the Lord Jesus can give and that you may feel his presence in your life and may the Holy Spirit be guiding you. Today we are going to continue here the series we have started, Seven Keys to a Happy Marriage. And uh, I will be sitting here. I'm not in a studio. I don't have another way to present it. It's a little bit strange for me to be talking, sitting here, but I hope we all can just enjoy the Word of God, that the Holy Spirit may talk to our hearts. And I greet each one of you that are joining us here, Sister Elizabeth Sanchez, thank you for joining us, Brother Luis Adam as well, may the Lord be with you, Brother Gerson Santa Cruz has joined us as well. So the talk today, when we are going to continue uh, the series, Seven Keys to a Happy Marriage, the topic today, we are going to be talking about assertive communication. So we will focus more on assertive communication among uh, families, uh, our spouses, our children, our parents, but uh, assertive communication can help us in all areas of our relationships in our life. So if you have ever been in a situation where you felt you should have said something, but you did not, or perhaps you are just being passive there, but you thought you should have said something, but you are not able to say. Or on the contrary, if you have ever said something and left, uh, felt bad after you said what you said, because you feel you didn't like uh, acted properly, you didn't communicate properly what you had to say. Or if you feel that sometimes others did not uh, say what they really thought about you because uh, of your attitude, the way you are talking to them, especially your children, your spouse, you feel they want to say something else, but they didn't because you didn't give them the proper space. So in all this case, uh, learning a little bit more about assertive communication will help us in our relationship with those we love, with those we come in contact with. Sometimes we are too passive in our communication. Sometimes we can be also aggressive in our communication. None of this is the ideal. So we are going to be talking about the ideal that is to have an assertive communication. That's true that as Christians, sometimes we have a kind of assertive, passive communication. And that's what we want to learn. We want to see here what we can learn this evening together here. So... Thank you, Brian, all of you for joining us. Uh, we have uh, also uh, Albita Vera. Thank you for joining us here, sister. Sister Raquel Souza, Alejandro Godetti, and Sister Vasti Rogers is with us here today as well. So thank you all for joining us. And I pray that we may enjoy this meeting here today and that when we finish this uh, series here, we may all finish with the assurance that we met Jesus Christ here. So when we talk about assertive communication, I always remember a text from the Bible that is in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4, where it says, the prophet came and he said, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh me every morning, he wakes me, wakes also my ear to hear as they learned. You know, that's what I wish I could say, like the prophet said here, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned. But actually, uh, I feel that it should be more like my prayer. Please, Lord, give me the tongue of the learned. And that's what we are going to talk about here, how to learn to uh, have a assertive communication. That's the topic for tonight here, continuing our ser series, uh, Seven Keys to a Happy Marriage. So let us all pray that the Lord may give us the tongue of the learned, that we know how to speak, when to speak, and uh, how and when uh, to speak. So we pray that the Lord may help all of, you, uh, all of us here. There are some moments, brethren, that we may be uh, a little bit too passive. Those moments, as we mentioned here, when we feel we should have said something, but we didn't say. And then after we feel bad, oh, I should have said something, it would have happened. And there are those moments when we say things and after we regret it, we think we, I shouldn't have said that. There are moments that, yeah, there are moments that uh, it's better just to be quiet, not to say anything. 
uh, Sister Claudia, who welcomes Claudia de Jesus, Sister uh, Leading, Brother Paul Garbage. I see uh, your, you have joined us as well. Brother Joseph, thank you all for joining us. So there are some moments, as I, I mentioned here, that's better to be quiet. I always like to use an illustration. Uh, have you notes when you go out for a walk in a rainy day, and if you walk somewhere where it's very muddy, you get lots of muddy in, in your shoes and you come back home. And uh, what happens if you try to take out that muddy at the, when it's wet? In those moments there, you are going to have a hard time. It's really difficult to remove mud of your shoes when it's wet. So the best way to remove it, you leave it alone, let it dry. And then later when it's dry, you come and it goes, comes out very easily. You can clean it quickly and very easily. So some situations in your life, some conversations we are having, it's better just uh, to be quiet and wait until it, it dries. So it will be easier to solve in some other moments. We don't have to say everything we want to say uh, all the time in the, the moment when things are sometimes a little bit hot. We better just wait. Like the mud, we wait until it gets dry, then we can easily remove it. So that's the same in our communication. But there are those moments when we have to say something. We cannot be quiet. It's necessary to say. In these moments is when we really need to have some techniques uh, and have know how to use an assertive communication. So what is assertive communication? I have been talking here about assertive communication, but I think it's good for us to understand what it is, what we are talking about. So to start with, I would just say that uh, uh, communications uh, between us and other people, uh, that's what communication is, we communicate with other people. They can be passive, they can be assertive, or they can be aggressive. So what is a assertive communication? Assertive communication is uh, when we can, we can say what we want to say without offending others. We can uh, express our feelings without uh, diminishing others or causing problems to others. So when we learn how to communicate assertively, uh, this assertive communication can strengthen our relationship by reducing stress from conflict. And of course, we all want it. We want to be able to communicate without uh, having conflict, having to go through the stress of conflict. So understanding assertive communication can also, can also help us to handle difficult family, friends, and co-workers more easily. We all have people that are complicated in our relationships. Uh, in our relationship. We have sometimes in the family people that are complicated. We have sometimes friends or co-workers. And when we learn to communicate assertively, then uh, it, it is going to reduce our stress and the dramas of, uh, of some of our communications. Ultimately, assertive communication empowers you and me to draw necessary boundaries that will allow us to get our needs in, in our relationships without alienating others. If we don't how to know how to communicate, we can alienate others and then we start feeling alone. And uh, so we want to communicate, express our needs, express when we don't like something without uh, letting resentment and uh, anger to come in between us and the, persons we, the person we are communicating. So that's what uh, this assertive communication topic here today is about, uh, to see if it can help us to uh, have a better relationship with uh, the ones we loved with our loved ones, uh, when we express our needs to them at the same time, also being open to their needs, to meet their needs. And uh, there are some people, they confuse assertive communication. They think that uh, being outspoken and confronting, that's being assertive. No, it's not. Assertive communication is as actually something that brings two people, th those that are communicating, those that that are in this communication closer, closer one to the other. In, and in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11 says, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. So fitly spoken, it means spoken the right way in the right moment. And uh, so that's what assertive communication teaches us. 
So th let's talk a little bit then for us to understand better it about passive communication. We'll try to define what passive communication is. We'll explain a little bit more what uh, uh, assertive communication is, and then we'll talk a little bit, just a little bit, about aggressive communication. I think we all know what an aggressive communication is. But what is passive communication? Passive communication involves allowing uh, your own rights to be violated by failing to express our honest feelings, our thoughts and beliefs, or by expressing our thoughts and feelings in a, an apologetic manner that others can easily disregard. So we'll talk a little bit more, give some examples of it, of being uh, having a, an assert, a passive communication. So uh, the message that we communicate when we have a we speak passively, too passively, is uh, that to, we will give the impression that we don't count what we are saying, it's not important, others can take advantage of me, uh, my thoughts and feelings don't matter, only yours do, so that's a passive communication. We always should be do, accept everything, and we really don't express properly our feelings, and it's not healthy, it makes us sick when we don't express our needs properly to others. People will not understand us, and some will just take advantage of us as well, and God doesn't want it. God, we are, we are created in the image of God. We need to have some, we deserve some respect from others as well, and we can get it when we communicate properly most of the times. So now, assertive communication, again, to emphasize it. Assertive communication is to communicate and express your thoughts, feelings, and opinions in a way that makes your views and needs clearly, clearly understood by others, without putting down their thoughts, their feelings, or their opinions. That's being assertive. That's what assertive communication is. You communicate your needs, your feelings, your thoughts, without offending others. And about uh, aggressive communication, we, what is an aggressive communication? As I said, I think we all know what it is, but aggressive communication involves communicating in a demanding, abrasive, or hostile way. It is insensitive to the needs of others, to the rights of others, to the beliefs of others, to the feelings of others. So that's being aggressive. You don't care about what others think, what they feel, uh, what they believe, you just want your way. The usual goals of an aggressive communication is to dominate, is to win, forcing others to lose. Uh, so, and once again, I want to say some people can easily uh, confuse uh, uh, aggressive communication with assertive communication. They think that when they are saying the things they are saying, they are being uh, assertive, they are just being clear of what they are doing, but they are not. So we will see how this confusion can be made. So I'll give you here some, some examples here. In a passive communication, uh, you are sometimes too scared to express yourself, to say what you think. You are just passive. And you even can shrink your shoulders and it seems too small. You make your, your body small uh, when you are being too passive. And in an assertive communication, the difference is you express yourself, you express your feelings clearly and confidently. Now, in aggressive communication, the person expresses self with irritation, with anger, in other words, being aggressive. And it can happen very easily inside uh, the home, within, between family members. You know, to express uh, yourself, to express myself with some irritation, with some anger, and that's improper. What we want is to express ourselves, our feelings clearly and confidently, but without being aggressive. And uh, so when a person has a passive uh, communication, another characteristic is the person avoids eye contact. The person avoids looking at the eyes of other people because they are scared, they are afraid, they are shy, or they, they feel they don't deserve what they are asking, and that's the impression they pass to others as well. So that's being too passive. In an, uh, an assertive communication, we maintain eye contact. You know, kindly maintain eye contact to, to the person or to the people you are talking to. Aggressive communication also maintains eye contact, but it's uh, in a way of staring in a judgmental way and uh, with expressions in the face that condemns the others, 
that despise the other person. So that's an aggressive communication. Uh, in a passive communication, another detail is the person might speak too softly. And as I mentioned, even the body shrinks and uh, that, uh, that's a too passive communication. You can be misunderstood. Uh, so when it's a assertive communication, the person has a, uh, a way of speaking firmly, but without uh, being aggressive. Aggressive in, in aggressive. So that's the difference here, Brad. Uh, pass, too passive, it speaks too softly or weakly. Then uh, assertive, the person has a balance. The person speaks firmly without being weak, but also without being too loud. So the aggressive communication in this sense, then the person speaks too loud and sometimes shouting, screaming. So that's being aggressive. So these are situations of life that we might see on our day-to-day -day life. And we might even face some of these in our families or we might be doing it ourselves. And we don't want to be uh, too passive. We don't want to be aggressive. What we want to be is assertive. And of course, as I said, for us Christians, it's pretty common and I think we should have some kind of passiveness uh, in our assertiveness. It's not wrong to, to always look for peace. So when we talk about passive, it's not wrong to be peaceful, to try to find a common ground to, uh, to maintain the peace with people, but not to the point of selling uh, our rights open hands all the time and letting people to abuse us. So that's what we are talking here. When we say passive, uh, it might give the wrong impression. We are saying people should not be pa passive or should not be peaceful or look for peace. No, that's not what it means. This passive communication is an exaggeration of not saying what we should say when we should say. We have to say, but in the proper way in some moments. And as I explained in the beginning, there are those moments when it's better not to say something. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit, will give us wisdom. We have to we are going to see some of things we have to do uh, in this relation. Uh, you know, there are those moments when we, we, we need to speak and there are the moments we need to be quiet and how to discern it. We will talk a little bit about it as well for us to have an idea. So a, a person that has always passive, too passive communication, this person is that person that's always aiming just to please others without caring about herself, about the needs of the family, uh, just a, uh, trying to please other people. And that's not r good or right and will not do good for anyone. So in assertive communication, then the person uh, aims to satisfy the needs of others, but also uh, think takes in account her own or his own needs. So this person will, that has a, uh, a assertive communication will learn to negotiate, to read, and uh, some compromise sometimes when conflicts exist. Now, the aggressive person aims always to win and don't take in consideration the needs of others. So we don't want this as well. So we want to be passive in our communication, taking in consideration our needs, but also the need of others, the need of that person or those we are communicating with. So, Brad, in some then techniques, uh, we will go, be going towards the end now but of our lecture here. But some things, some techniques, some things we have to learn in order to have a uh, uh, assertive communication, not to go to the extreme of being too passive uh, in our communication and also not going to the extreme of being aggressive. So first well, thing here, uh, make no comparisons when communicating inside your family. What do I mean here? Uh, parents do it very easily and uh, if you pay attention you are going to see that comparisons create more problem than benefit. Uh, parents usually compare, compare one child to another and uh, when pointing out their mistakes or their shortcomings or, or to manipulate the children to do something they want the children to do. I'll give one example of it. You can come and say, you know, Peter, you didn't do, you didn't finish your homework. You should do, you should, should be more like Mary, who always finishes her homework. She does her homework without me having to tell her how to do. So you compare Peter with Mary. What happens to Peter? This uh, creates some feelings of insecurity, some feelings of inferiority, resentment, and unhealth competitiveness. If you pay attention, if you have done it in the past, or if you are doing it, comparing one child with 
with a mother, you are going to see that that child that uh, is suffering this kind of comparison, comparison will feel resented, will feel some inferiority, will feel angry. So avoid comparison and between spouses the same way. You know, when a man comes to his wife and say, you know, my mother used to cook the food, this food this way. I wish you knew how to do her like she did. So comparing your spouse with your mother, it's just going to create some barriers between yeah, you and this, your wife, you know, and probably will also create some resentments inside your wife to the point where she will not just resent you, but also you resent your mother. We look to our mother different as a competition. So avoid this kind of comparisons. The same if a woman comes and starts comparing her husband with her father. Oh, my father used to do this better than you do. Why don't you do like my father used to do? It's not going to help your relationship with your husband as well. It's just going to create some resentments from, from you. He will resent you and more like he unconsciously also, you might resent your father and create a competition between them. So avoid this comparison between your children or uh, your husband, your wife with someone else. So that's one thing that will help you to avoid the have problems. Your communication will facilitate and help you to have a more assertive communication. Never say, say my mother used to do better than you do. My father uh, did better than you, you did. Uh, or I wish you would do, or you would be more like my father, my mother, or your brother, your sister. And remember, each child, each woman, each man, each person is unique. So this comparison is unfair. We are different. We all have some bad qualities here and some not so good qualities there that others do better in some areas and we can do better in some other areas. So comparison is never really fair when we are comparing our children with other children, our spouse with someone else. So every person also acts different under specific circumstance. So avoid comparison, don't make comparison. Also the second, be empathetic in your communication. Assertive communication starts with respecting one another, respect, respect toward, to, towards others. Before addressing your spouse or your children or your parents, take some time to think about what you are going to tell them and how you are going to tell them, how you are going to do it. Especially when a message you want to convey is very important and you want it to stick in the mind of those you are going to be talking to, the person you are going to be talking to. So be empathetic. Uh, you, know, you must uh, show some empathy towards the person else you are going to talk, and it's going to make the, the message to sink in, sink in much better. Uh, if all the family members uh, would seek to understand how... Uh, they all think and how they feel to understand each other, it will be much easier to engage in health dialogue, in a health communication. And we are going to reach our goals in communicating much easier. So be empathetic. Try to understand their side. What they are hearing might not be really what you are saying. So you might have to find some softer wo words, some different words to explain it or with more patience or with some other time. So try to understand their side, try to understand their children. They are children, they hear and they understand things differently from the way you hear, you listen and you understand things sometimes. So try to see their side. That means be empathetic. And also when dealing with some situations in your family, Ask the opinion of your spouse, of your wife, of your husband. Ask the opinion sometimes of your children as well. Involve them. Uh, I'll give an example of what uh, I'm trying to, to say here. For example, you have a tap in your sink that's leaking there. The, let's say the bathroom sink tap is, is leaking. It's dropping there all the time. And uh, you have to, you'll see the need of solving this communication. Instead of just calling a plumber to come and fix it, you know, you can just uh, ask your husband, show him and say, you know, what do you think we should do? You don't need to come and give the solution all the time and tell him, I think we should call a plumber, I think you should fix it, 
call him and ask his opinion. What do you think we should do here? Should we call a plumber? Or do you have any other suggestion? In a case like this, I'll tell you, most, of, most men, they'll just say, you know, leave it. I am the man of the house. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to fix it. So I don't want another man to come here in my house to fix these things that I can do. So that, but that's just one example here. So try to get the opinion of others. You don't have to solve all the problems by yourself. It's going to relieve some stress from you. Have to take all the responsibility of the decisions. Yes, there are some circumstances that you have to decide in the moment. If the house is catching fire, you are not going to get the opinion of the rest of the family if you should call the fire department or not. But in most circumstances, yes, it's wise to ask their opinion. And as I said, in many instances, many details, you can just ask the opinion of the children. Because with children, sometimes uh, we as parents, we have, we have authority upon our children. And we know that, they know that, but this authority we have also may be a hindrance if we don't open space for them to talk to us, to give their opinions. So in small matters of life, small things, ask the opinion of your children as well. It will open the doors for an, for an assertive communication. Uh, I'll, I'll give an example here. You are going to church on Sabbath. You want to involve your children? Just uh, ask them, you know, what color of uh, tie you think would be better? Which tie you think would be better? This one or this one? Let them talk to you. You'll get friends on them. Uh, but just do one thing. If you are going to give them the chance to choose, you are going to listen to their opinion. Be ready and prepared to go with their opinion. So if you are going to ask their opinion about the tie, what you have to do? Get two or three ties that any of them you are going to be satisfied with. So any of them that they point, you are going to wear it. So if it's shoes, do the same thing. So you get the family involved in your, in, in, with their opinion. Let uh, your children uh, participate and have a voice in some decisions inside the home. And between spouse, Spouses, your wife and your, your or your husband, just uh, try to let them give their opinion, share th their opinions as well, and uh, that that will be a way of opening the doors for an assertive communication. Another thing, the fourth thing here, I want to leave with you is express yourselves to your family. You cannot expect your children or your spouse to express their feelings, their thoughts, if you don't. So talk to them, be open to them. Tell them about your day, about your concerns, your interests. Of course, you, the Lord will give you wisdom to filter what you have to share, not to overburden your children also with your problems, but just talk about simple things that they'll see you are open, you trust them. So pay attention, of, similarly, pay attention when they talk to you and listen carefully when they have something to tell you. If you think they are wrong, then give them some advice instead of judging or scolding them. Uh, never punish your children for telling you the truth or for being honest. If you want your children to keep uh, this open channel with you, try to understand them, advise them, try to help them, not to, to, to make the same mistake again, but kindly. Uh, you want your children or your spouse to trust and share their concerns with you. So never punish your children, neither your spouse for being honest with you, for open the heart and trusting that you are going to understand them. And of course, understanding doesn't mean that you should stop correcting them, uh, you know, correcting your children where they, when they are wrong. In this regard, don't forget that, uh, you know, instruct them, correcting them will help them to learn from their mistakes so they don't repeat them again. You are supposed to correct them, but in a kind, in kind way. Remember that many lessons are learning through good role models. So be an example. Be the first to instill an assertive communication. Open the channels, talk to your children, and they will trust you and they will talk to you once you trust them and you talk to them about your day, about the things that are, some things that are going on in your life. So, and they will learn by example and they'll be open. They'll see that they have a friend on you. So to close, Bradley, I want to say here, uh, to have assertive communication, a proper communication, choose the right time and the right place to talk. We could uh, uh, amplify it here, talk more about it, but I think you understand. Choose the right time, it means not when you are hot, when you are angry, 
choose a moment when you can talk calmly and choose the right place, not in front of other people to say whatever comes to your mind. So also, second, consider how you speak. And remember, men, women, and children, they hear things differently, they communicate differently, we are different from one another. Uh, and uh, the third, I want to say, don't bring, the past, uh, bring back the past. Things that happened five years ago, ten years ago, don't say, oh, but you said so, or you did so that time. That is something that destroys communication, destroys relationship. Leave the past, you forgave, it's forgiven, leave it behind, leave it in God's hand, and uh, if you forgave, forgive, for, forget it as well. So don't bring ba back bad things from the past, bad events from the past. Let it be, let it go. Uh, fourth, prepare the person. Prepare your husband when you have to tell him something. Prepare your wife. Do some preparation. Before, don't come suddenly with some subjects that we require, require from them some energy to swallow, to digest it. And I'll tell you, sisters here, especially men, we don't like this kind of surprise. So <laughs> prepare us if you have something to say. Try to prepare us little by little, and then you say it. But husbands, we brethren, brothers, we, sh we should do the same thing. Be careful uh, preparing our spouse when, or our children for some subjects that are a little bit more delicate, requires more energy from them to digest it. And for last, once again, teach by example. Be yourself a good example on assertive communication, consideration, taking consideration the needs of your family, of your loved ones. And the Lord will bless you, will bless your family. If you try to practice these things we spoke here, I know it's lots of information we have been talking, uh, sharing here, but some of these things, by God's grace, with the help of the Holy Spirit, will be uh, in our minds and we can start practicing them. But uh, in general, summarizing assertive communication, once again, is to communicate our feelings, our thoughts, our needs, uh, taking consideration the needs of others as well, and taking consideration their feelings. So may God bless you and bless your family, and that you all may learn together to have an effective communication, have an assertive communication, and may it be a blessing for your family, and your family may shine to be a blessing for others, to your neighborhood and for those in your church, whatever the Lord leads you. Thank you, brethren, once again for being with us here, for watching. And before closing, I want to pray with you. And here now I have the opportunity. It's a proper place for me to kneel down. So I'm going to kneel down with you here. If you can kneel down, you, uh, if you, can, uh, you can decide to do so. If not, the way you are, we can pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here together, meditate in this evening, in the verse from the Bible, in these uh, matters of communication. Help us, Lord, to have the tongue of the learned, that when we, may, we say words, we may say it in the right way. We may say it to be a blessing for those that we love, for those you, you put us in contact with. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together here once again. And I ask you to bless each of the brethren of the people that are here watching us, those that will be still watching. May you lead them, protect them, bless their families, and help them to communicate effectively, assertively, in such a way that uh, your goals may be reached in the life of each one of us. We put our lives and plans in thy hands, and we ask you to do for us more than we even know how to ask. We ask you above all that you save us for thy kingdom. In the name of Jesus, amen. So thank you, brethren, once again. May God be with all of you. I will be looking for the message left here, each one of you that have been with us, and I will be praying for all of you. And I hope to be able to see you here sometime soon again. God bless. Bye.